was in front of a, like at a film festival, say, and that's it. And um, I remember at the Sundance Film Festival, the first time that we showed the film, all these distributors are there and all these agents are there. And you know from the moment they walk out how the movie's gonna do. It's so bizarre. And then a curtain opens and you get to see this train with the video, you know, and, and we're going to Hollywood and you think, oh. I, I love getting magazines on the iPad. I think it's so great. The big goofball. They were all over in the prison. <laughs> This is a play that I've loved since I was a teenager, and I um, and um, sometimes in, in, I've been a freelance stage director for 20 years. And every once in a while, I get to go into a university or school and do a play with students. And I usually try to choose a play that I would never get to do in a big theater. And, and so I, posing on the students. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so in 2009, uh, I chose to, to do this play with the students here, the MFA students at, at ACT in our very small theater that we worked in called Zeum. And we had like $50 and 12 actors. And this is a play that has 70 characters and five locations. So it was, uh, it was very challenging and really fun. And everybody liked it so much. Um, we decided to do it on the main stage. The Vitaphone, the talkies. They talk. Oh, that. That? You ought to hear them cheering, May. Everybody went nuts. I'm telling you, May, it's going to revolutionize the entire industry. It's something so big, I bet even the Vitaphone people don't know what they've got yet. You gotta hear it, May, to realize what it means. Now you've had the opportunity to put this on in the big house here. Right, right. And I assume you had a little more than $50 budget. A little more budget. than $50, yeah. What did you do different and does budget make a difference? And what is that difference? Well, it, do, it, it, it does make a difference. I mean, I love to do theater with no, absolutely nothing. There's, there's something that's incredibly challenging and rewarding about that. But also for me, for me, just in my particular experience, I started in like basement theater and storefront theaters and doing theater in the round and, and th uh, theater in, um, in different shaped spaces. So when I get a chance to work in a theater like this, with a proscenium and old fashioned balconies and mezzanine and a great big grand drape that comes in the curtain. I love it because to me it's, it's unusual and it's magical. I, one of my favorite moments in the theater is when the curtain goes up because probably because for years I didn't even get a curtain. So it, I, I relish it when I get a chance. And same, to, to be able to actually do this play with proper sets and to have five different sets, it, it, it adds to the magic, the theatricality for the audience to see they don't know what's coming and then a curtain opens and you get to see this train with the video, you know, and, and we're going to Hollywood and you think, oh, you know, it's, it's magic. I write the most widely syndicated column in the United States. Wait. Anybody who reads the newspapers, well, where on earth have you been that you haven't heard about me? I've been living in England for the last eight years, Helen. That's probably why I didn't know. But do go on and tell me. I'm frightfully interested. <laughs> film is much, much more technical. Um, f uh, a film uh, is made in uh, phases. You know, there's a, there's, there's. Um, creating the script, which is a whole making of the film. It's um, prepping the film is a whole nother phase of the film. And you, have to, you have to plan the entire film from beginning to end before you even start shooting. Then you have the shooting, which is a whole nother event. And then uh, after that, you edit it, which is like making the movie all over again. So you make a movie many times over. Um, a play, it all happens together, and it's finite when it's done. It's done forever, and, and there's just you know there's records of it or images or video, but but it's a, it's a completely live event. With film, it's much harder to do that. I mean, you can have a preview of a, of, a, of a film and show it to people and get a response and go back and change it, but but often the first official time that you show the film is in front of a like at a film festival, say, and that's it. And um, I remember at the Sundance Film Festival, the first time that we showed the film all these distributors are there and all these agents are there and you know from the moment they walk out how the movie's going to do it's so bizarre looking back at um, being a film buff as well looking back at this time in history that this uh this plays about what do you think was the most interesting thing you learned about the change from silent to speech 
One of the things that I learned about the transition from silent pictures to talkies is that it took a very long time for, for talking pictures to come. People were trying to make pictures talk almost from the time that silent movies were made. And so um, when they did find a way to make it work, the, be the first talking pictures were extremely clumsy. Um, they had to put the, 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 the microphone in a place where both you and I could have our scene together but get it in the mic. And, and so it was, very, it was very rough. And silent movies had become very, very artistic. I mean, the good silent movies. And so they were so far superior to the talking pictures at the beginning that people still, there were a lot of people that felt like, no, silent pictures are still the art superior. form. Because they weren't, suddenly movies became much less mobile. And movies become, became much less international. So you could show a silent movie to almost any audience all over the world. But yeah. once talking happened, it limited the way that, that pictures were made. In fact, some early talking films, like Greta, Garber, Greta Garbo's first um, talking picture, they made it in English, mm -hmm. and then they would, they would cut, and then they would do it in German. Yeah. And they would have like another actor come in and, and do a part and, and, do, and speak in German. So they were shooting it simultaneously so they could have two markets. Thousands of dollars thrown away every day. Why do they do that? Do you know? No, sir. Well, there you are. Plenty of good minds are brought out here. Why aren't they used? Let's move to the stark threes as the scene passes by us okay. here. So first question, what's your favorite food that you just love to taste, devour, have for the rest of your life? I love sushi. Sushi? Yeah. What kind? Have any type to your fish? Yellowtail makes me crazy. That's, <laughs> give this guy a star. That's the, my favorite too. Yeah. I'm a martini with a whisper or no vermouth guy. Kettle one. I, I love getting magazines on the iPad. I think it's so great and it's so uh, so not a waste of paper. Favorite magazine uh, that you can disclose? New Yorker. <laughs> New Yorker, okay, yes. fabulous. Yes. Fabulous. But I also read like Vanity Fair and Details and come on. <laughs> <laughs> fabulous. Well, thank you for your time. Of course, of course. Time. It was very nice to talk to you. ACT. That's our clapper board. Love it. We only have $10 budget. We have us. a clapper if you need it. <laughs> thank you for joining me on this beautiful train. Thank you for uh, taking the time. Actually, start over again. Thank you. I'm ha thanking him too much. That's not good. Okay. He should be thankful to talk to me. I am very thankful <laughs> to be talking to you now. It's the name of it. Absolutely. And I love it. Great. So we'll have Sandra to. Sanraku is the. Sanraku, very good. Sanraku. Sanraku on Geary. Oh, yeah.